In our Road to a Vaccine series, we're looking at whether America is ready for the rollout of a COVID vaccine. And this morning, we are showing you the massive distribution challenges that our country faces. The earliest a vaccine is expected to be ready for FDA authorization is the end of November. The CDC has already given states $200 million to prepare for distribution. But will we be able to get the vaccine safely and efficiently to the American people? Big question there. Our CBS News senior medical correspondent, Dr. Tara Narula, found out. Imagine preparing to transport a coronavirus vaccine without knowing where the vaccine will be manufactured, what the packaging will be, or how cold it'll need to be kept. That's the daunting task before shipping companies like DHL, according to its CEO of Global Forwarding USA, David Goldberg. There's still a lot of things that are unknown, and we've been talking to the different manufacturers who are in various phases of the clinical trials to get ready. At this cold chain facility near Chicago's O'Hare Airport, vaccines are stored at various temperatures before they're sent to doctor's offices, pharmacies, and hospitals. We've been moving the flu vaccine, the meningitis vaccine. I think the challenge related to this vaccine is it's, you know, a vaccine that the world needs um, as soon as possible at once. Um, which would make it, you know, very difficult in terms of logistics. The colder the vaccine, the more complicated the logistics. Pfizer's vaccine candidate needs to be kept at about minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit, while Moderna's needs to be stored at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. A lot of providers don't have that type of storage. Molly Howell is North Dakota's immunization program manager. She says the ultra-cold storage requirement will make it challenging for states to get the vaccine to their residents. Once a provider receives that vaccine, it really starts the clock that the vaccine needs to be administered within five days of when it's put in the refrigerator. Pfizer's vaccine is expected to ship in containers with almost 1,000 shots. That worries Howell. The minimum increment of a thousand doses and figuring out how we can get that to the rural areas is what's keeping me up at night. We're thinking about the possibility of having to repackage and redistribute that vaccine into smaller quantities. And while states like North Dakota gear up for mass distribution, the pandemic continues to batter state budgets. The trade associations that represent health officials across the country have asked Congress for $8.4 billion to help states distribute the vaccine. The states and their health departments, they are both tapped out financially and then also in terms of their human resources. They've been running at 100 miles an hour to do the contact tracing to make up for a not very efficient federal response. Georgetown professor Dr. Jesse Goodman says there needs to be an effective national system for distributing and monitoring the vaccine. Otherwise, it's going to be chaos. We may have multiple vaccines. We may require two doses. So they're going to need to be known who got what vaccine and when they need to come back for their second dose. So we do have a big challenge. A challenge that Goodman understands firsthand. Our vaccine team acted immediately along with CDC. He was the FDA's chief scientist in 2009 and navigated the agency's response to the H1N1 flu pandemic. Do you feel the vaccine has been driven by science or politics? I think the vaccine development has been driven by science and by the public health need. But whether we will leave it in the hands of the experts to carefully consider the data and make decisions, that's the next critical step. The absolute most important thing is transparency, is not overpromising, and is not undermining the scientists, in particular the FDA. I think if we do that and we're transparent about the results, the results will speak for themselves. Pfizer tells CBS News it's made changes to ensure it can deliver a potential vaccine around the world, including upgrading site infrastructure to manage ultra-low temp products and expanding capabilities for distribution centers. Such an interesting piece. I don't think I appreciated the challenge of distribution until I saw it. The ultra-cold temperatures are of particular interest. How could that requirement impact where a vaccine is distributed? 
Well, it's a big logistical challenge, Tony. You can imagine most of the sites where people would get their vaccines, doctors, offices, hospitals, pharmacies, don't have that freezer capability. So states are gonna have to look to innovative ideas. It's gonna have to be a lot of partnership between the public and private sector. Operation Warp Speed's going to be involved. So North Dakota, Molly Howell, when we spoke to her, said they're looking at things like drive through auditoriums and even using ice fishing houses. The hope is that as the research and science progresses as well, there may be modifications to the vaccines so that in you know time, they don't require those ultra low temperatures. And also, obviously, there are other vaccine candidates that may be better suited for more rural areas. For example, Johnson & Johnson, if it ultimately gets approved, does not require that ultra low temp. Yeah. One interesting thing, uh, West Africa is probably the only place that's well positioned for this because of their experience with the Ebola vaccine, which did require ultra cold temperatures. Very interesting. You know, tracking is another component of this. Uh, three of the vaccines that could be approved require two doses. So how will the federal government, if at all, track who has gotten a vaccine, especially when people need two uh, installments for it to work? Right, and so we really do need to build that database, and you'll hear more tomorrow, but when we spoke to Operation Warp Speed, they did mention that there is a national database, they're populating it now, with the hope that if somebody goes into, for example, a CVS in one state, and then needs to get vaccinated 28 days later in a different state at a different location, we would be able to track that. The other challenge is obviously going to make sure that people get that second dose. As you know, it can be difficult to get people to come in, even for dose one. Yeah, sure can. Really interesting, Dr. Terranarula. Thank you very much.